actually, this brings another question that I was going to bring up later, but I'll do it now because it's topical. Looking at the 50 plus one uh, model, I think it actually tackles another issue too that no one's really talking about, but I think will come to pass soon because it's already come to pass in some you know American sports that have that have a similar model. Uh, and that's the idea of it's getting really expensive, right? Because you look at the 50 plus one model, uh, it sort of it keeps your pocketbooks in check as well, whereas you don't see Bundesliga clubs shelling out $300 million in a transfer, right? 300 million euros. Um, because, you know, fans won't do that. They're not willing to do that, right? And, and I think as a result, that's why you have, you know, that's why Bundesliga are the ones that find all of the diamonds in the rough talent, you know? You look at players like Aubameyang, even. He's not having a good year this year, but you know, he's a talented player. Uh, German system, you know, Christian, Christian Pulisic came up through the Dortmund system. Erling Haaland, of course. How could we forget? Kim, Kimmich, Amazing. Werner, and... Exactly. Uh, Jaden Sancho. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, you know, it's because they, they, they can't just shell out disgusting sums of money for, for big names. Um, and I think that's something where you look at, like, the MLB, for instance, right? Major League Baseball. You don't get any amazing, co- complete rosters that are, aren't spending, like, maybe a billion dollars on payroll, right? Um, you can't find that in a, uh, you can't find that anything close to that in, in the Bundesliga, right? And you probably never will just because everything will be kept in check and you have clubs making smart, you know, financial decisions. And it puts, it puts basically not a physical cap because I don't think anyone wants an actual cap, right? I don't think people want market cap for how much you can spend on a roster, but I think having that soft cap of, yeah, because, you know, that 50 plus one just isn't willing to pay that much money for the club. Um, it, it sort of, it, it provides a sort of natural cap of, of how much money is going to be poured into the sport. I think uh, Bayern, the Bayern Munich CEO, Karl Heinz Romanigi, he said, uh, they has this quote, he said, the solution is to reduce costs. Like exactly. you were saying, with the Super League, the clubs are trying to solve the problem of debts, which have worsened with the pandemic. The thing is, Perez knew when to strike with this idea, because even though it's been in the making for a while, he knew that since the, because of the pandemic, these clubs were struggling. You have to realize fans have been coming to games for a, a year. You know, and that actually is a, a big source of money for these clubs. So when you have that, you know, he knew, he knew that these club that these clubs were suffering a little. And he was like, hey, I could get I could give you all how much was it to participate? Like 250 million just to participate. And you know, that would yeah. be a lot of money. Yeah. For, for these clubs. Yeah. A lot of them are in debt right now. And so, th- but Romani could see right through that. He knew that there's just a temporary solution to fix the depth of these clubs. And they kind of all fell for it. But, you know, lucky for yeah. them, the fans and UEFA, FIFA, all intervened. Because mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, football is about equity. You know, it's about success or failure being earned on the pitch, you know, yes. rather than just being handed, it out, handed out to, to specific clubs because they want um, it, it mattered because it treats everyone the same, right? Even if the smallest and poorest, right? Fulham just Fulham just tied uh, our Arsenal last week, or, or did they? No, Fulham just beat Arsenal. You know, um, <laughs> you know, look at that, like stuff like that. You know, it, it deserves to happen. I'm an Arsenal fan. It deserves to happen. Liverpool drew Newcastle, right here. but they, yeah, they should have Liverpool won. drew Newcastle. Joe Willock scored. You know, like come on, it, it deserves to happen. It's part of what makes football great. Yeah, just I think that. also uh, Pep Guardiola said it's not a sport if uh, you take the competition out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely. he was talking about the Super League, speaking out against it. I, I, think, I think it's disgraceful. I think it's disgraceful that this even happened. I think it. Yeah. I think it's a it's it's a look into the problems that do exist. Right, just because Super League didn't happen doesn't mean that the problems go away. Exactly, and I think I know it is disgraceful, uh, but I think it did need to happen. Like I said before. Mm-hmm. Because now people are actually going to look at this problem, you know, people like, how was this able, able to even happen in the first place? How was like all these owners almost about to start this league and, you know, actually execute this plan. So now I think, you know, people are going to start looking more at UEFA. Uh, Boris Johnson still wants to implement that 50 plus one. I hope other governments want to look into that as well. And uh, hopefully, you know, the game of football, keeps changing for the better. 
If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel, the M2M Network, for more sports and entertainment content.